is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and it's that time of year again, iOS update. This time it's iOS 11, and it goes covers many models, older models and all that sort of thing, so check out the graphic on the screen right now, and you can see if you're covered. Good chance you are. So, of course, there's going to be a million what's new in iOS 11 things that already have been going back to the beta. I'm just going to cover the things I think that are particularly useful, interesting, or sometimes funny. We're going to look at it now. The iPad gets the biggest makeover with iOS 11. I mean, this is one of the bigger iOS updates, perhaps since they first allowed third-party apps, but particularly for the iPad. This happens to be the iPad Pro latest generation 12.9-inch model, but uh, the same holds true other than the very few pen-specific features for all of the iPads. So notice this is just like a baby Macintosh now, isn't it? OS 10 here, you've got a launcher dock. Cool. So this becomes the way you multitask. You can still double click the home button if you wish, and that's a different view we'll take a look at in a minute, but you can also use this, which is pretty handy. So say you're in a program like Notes, and you want to swipe up, but um, now this is the new improved multitasking interface, which is quite a change right here. So you've got your control center stuff right here, which is customizable. You can add more things, but only Apple things. There's no third party access right now. So you want an Apple TV remote, you got it. You can put that there. So here is all the programs that are available and you can switch between them. Cool. Okay. Let's go back to notes. Notice how I have a pairing going on here. It saved that pairing. This is an example of the new drag and drop over here. So say I've got something here in a web browser. I want to save this. This drawing thing right here. And so I just press and hold on that. And I can drag it right over there. Now the application has to be iOS 11 ready to support that feature. And obviously some programs is never going to make sense. If you're playing a game or something, you don't need to drag and drop into it, do you? But Already, you can see some programs like Notes do. It should be coming for programs like Procreate, in fact, really, really soon, and other art applications where that's really a handy thing to do. And obviously, if you're, say, you're writing a term paper in pages and you need to bring in some illustrations or a diagram, it makes it that easy. That's pretty sweet. So it's nice that it saves the app parent, and we have the resizing here as well. And say I wanted to bring in my brand new file manager. Look at this. We can do just like that. That's how you do that. And you can resize it as well. And you can move them side by side. This is a better way of doing multitasking than the last version, which I found so unintuitive that I actually just didn't even use it a whole lot of the time. So let's take a look at that. A new, finally, a file manager, right? Access to that. So you've got stuff that's on your iCloud drive. You've got access to Dropbox and OneDrive as well. I'm sure it's going to grow. Now this one isn't as elegant and pretty looking, but you do have access still to third-party stuff. So that's a nicer way of doing it. And oh my goodness, isn't that nice? If you want to edit locations, just do it right here. As they add more, you can do that. So we'll do that. And there you have it. So file browser itself. So look, oh, access to network folders and shared with apps. My goodness, this is actually finally starting to show some hope of, with this access to the file system, which is something that iPad people particularly wanted so they could use this as kind of a laptop replacement. All these things are geared towards making this a better laptop replacement. Obviously, though, there's handy things for people like me. I don't usually try to use this to replace a laptop. I would rather just use a laptop for laptop-y tasks. But if I am doing art and I want to pull an image up from photos or from the web, now I can do that sort of thing. There's all sorts of applications for this. You can figure that out. Now, here's one for you Galaxy Note fans. It's something I wonder if more, more of you Android folks are watching this than anything else to see what the other side's been up to. So we wake this up, tap right there, and I can go straight into Notes without unlocking the device. So you've got a sleep screen note-taking feature. This is the Apple Notes program. Now, changes on the iPhone are a lot more subtle because, well, they weren't trying to turn this into a multitasking, multitasking sort of beast. You still have the swipe up, and now you've got the new control center with all these kind of widgets here. you got Apple TV now you can add on, and there's what that looks like. We don't actually have an Apple TV, so you're not going to see anything happen there. So a handier step. Now, this is neat. You can actually use your flash as a flashlight, and here's a control of the brightness right here. So, 
and you can set the brightness of it. That's a cute little thing like that. However, something that would be really useful is for Wi-Fi, instead of just turning it on and off, I would love if you could do something like press and hold and switch between access points. Because I've always found that the iPhone is not the most clever at picking the strongest signal in a place where you have multiple access points, and you gotta go still through settings and stuff to do that. But nice little change nonetheless. Notifications get a little bit of a makeover, not as exciting. You can swipe that way to see things and then you've got your news and whatever information that you want on that screen right there. So this one, a lot more chill. There's a couple of subtle things. When you use Touch ID, say you're downloading an app from the App Store, well, it'll make a little boink when it's successful. So no more wondering, did it work, and waiting to stare at the screen to see if it works. So that means you can stick it back in your pocket quicker. So if you're doing something like Apple Pay or something like that. Another neat thing is the AR functionality. Now, you know, Apple is not the first to bring new features usually, but they, they use existing features in a way that's better than other folks have. So this is the IKEA catalog. See, some AR things are really still geared towards selling you stuff. But let's say we want to throw in some living room furniture. You just Stick it right there, and here it is on this table. Now, obviously, it makes more sense if we throw this in the middle of the room, but this is actually a better job of AR placement that I've seen. When I've used AR phones, like the Zenfone AR we reviewed, often it would put a car floating four feet above the ground. It just didn't make any sense. So this is handled really well, and this is just the iPhone 7 Plus. This is not the 8 Plus. We'll be reviewing that soon, and it's got plenty enough horsepower to do that sort of thing. Live photos have gotten, well, a little bit more lively, I guess you would say. So you've got a live photo right here that you've taken. There's my cat trying to steal my food. So here's looping effects. You can see he is forever going to. The bouncing effect. Let's try that one. There it is. So yeah, there's live photos. The next one is for iMessage. <laughs> I'm not loving this one too much, but I might like to see this in some other applications. Go figure. I think with Apple, they, they just love to overload iMessage as if stickers didn't confuse you enough and stuff like that and adding more stickers. Here you go. If you're in the thread of an existing message, you have your little app strip here. So you can grab little things from applications and throw them into a text message. I suppose throwing a map in could be handy if you're giving somebody directions, but to me, this is just more stuff that people are going to be like, the what? So maybe I want to tell my buddy I, we should go see a movie. So we hit IMDB. We wait, we wait. There it is. Okay, how about it? Everybody loves a creepy clown, right? So, boom, I have just sent them that. All right, for now, both for the iPad and for the iPhone, there is a makeover for the App Store, which is nice. It hasn't been really given a makeover in a while. Anything is going to help here. So it has a more magazine-like look, I suppose, you know? You can do that. You can switch over to games. Of course, AR games are going to be a thing for a while here. Apps, and you have your usual search and your access to updates. So. There it is. There's, of course, more things. Apple changed a lot of stuff. There's new features for AirPlay. There's, you know, you get the idea. But these are, I think, the most salient and the most exciting things that are going on. And we'll be reviewing the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus soon so you can see them in action on the new hardware. But so far, I'm finding iOS 11 works real well on the last generation hardware.